In example 7, in examples class 1, we should be using Excel to calculate the standard deviation, using Excel as a computational tool because the numbers we will be working with are generally um, more complicated than the ones we used in example 6. So going into Excel, we're going to bring up a file for the average temperature when people start heating their home. And the screen dumps that we'll be working through, you will be able to find in the printed notes, or the notes you can print out from the examples class. So the first step in finding the standard deviation, we're going to work through the various steps in Excel and then at the end we shall use the function to check our answer. That's a far quicker way of doing it, but let's go through the steps so we can see how the standard deviation is built up. The first step for finding the standard deviation is calculating the mean, our sample mean, which is X bar. We need to add up the sum of the values and divide by the number of values that we have in our data set. So using the sum function in Excel and dragging the mouse down over the selection that we require, we're working out the sum D6 to D15 for the references for the cell and dividing by the number that we have in our data set, which is 10. And pressing enter. Excel gives us the mean of 13.46. So the next step to find our standard deviation is working out the deviations of each of our observations from the mean, which we'll call X minus X bar. We're taking X bar away from each of the observations. We can do this in Excel by typing equals, clicking on the first value, 15.2, subtracting the mean of 13.46, which we can fix by using the absolute referencing, by inserting the dollar signs to make sure that that cell reference is fixed and we don't take away any other value. It means that every time as we copy this formula down, we will be subtracting that same mean of 13.46 away from the observations. So moving the cursor to the bottom right-hand corner, till it changes to that solid black cross, then we can drag down to the bottom of our observations and Excel will calculate all those deviations for us. The next step, the next column, is squaring the deviations from the mean. We'll call that X minus X bar and we will square it, so X minus X bar squared. And the square symbol in Excel, it's using the up arrow times 2, we'll square it. So that's the up arrow 2, we'll square the values. So clicking on the first one, up arrow 2 will give us the square of 1.74. And then doing the same procedure again, changing to the solar black cross and dragging down. We can see what we're doing by looking at the function bar at the top. We can always keep track of the formulas that were put in. We can see where we are by clicking on any of the cells and seeing what function gave us that value. So always check your function bar. You can type directly into there um, if at any stage you want to type the function in directly. So the next stage in finding our standard deviation is summing those values. So we want the sum of the squared deviations. It's just working through the formula for the standard deviation. So we're going to use the sum function in Excel and just highlight the range of cells that we want to add together. So it's F6 to F15 in this case. Closing the bracket and pressing return gives a sum of squared deviations of 11.904. The next step that we need to do is to find our sample variance. That's our S squared. Sample variance. We do this by dividing by n minus 1. For a sample variance or a sample standard deviation, we divide by n, which is a number in our data set, minus 1. So in this case, we'll be dividing by 9. So dividing by 9, Excel will do the work, gives us a variance of 1.322. The next step is finally to get our standard deviation, which will be the square root of our variance to give us S, our sample standard deviation. 
So using the function in Excel, we can type that in directly, or we can look for the function in the statistical functions if we choose to do it that way. We'll do the square root by typing in SQRT. Note the use of cell references. We highlight that, and it automatically puts F5, F17 into the formula for us because we highlighted the cell F17. So closing our brackets and hitting return gives us a standard deviation of 1.15. And finally, we want to check that standard deviation by using the function in Excel as the standard deviation function directly. Remember, we went through these steps just to follow the formula that we've been using as in example 6. So using Excel function, going into formulas, into statistical, we'll be looking for the standard deviation formula itself. Excel also has a function for the mean. We can use the average function in Excel. So Excel has a lot of statistical functions that we can make use of for the problems on this course. For the standard deviation, we select the STDEV function. We click on OK and Excel will automatically assume a range of values that we want the standard deviation for. It's thinking we want F17 to F18. That's not the range that we want, so we will go and highlight the range, our original values, remember, that we want to find the standard deviation of. So we highlight D6 to D15. With that selection, pressing OK, returns the value of 1.15, so our value using the function in Excel matches the value that we find using the various steps in the standard deviation formula. So standard deviation for the set of data of 1.15. And Excel has the mean. We could check the mean from this as well. If we just use the statistical functions again, if we have a look in the statistical function selection again, we can choose the function that we want, and this time it's the average function. Excel calls the mean the average function. We click on OK. Once again, it will assume what range we're interested in, so we need to check we've actually got the range of the original data values. So make sure we've highlighted the same range again, the 15.2 down to the 11.7. So that's D6 to D15. We click OK and returns the mean of 13.46, which matches the value that we find using the formula. This is the end of our example on using Excel to find the standard deviation.